Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the Trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Thus says the wisdom of God, the Lord possessed me, the beginning of his ways, the forerunner of his prodigies of long ago. From of old I was poured forth, at the first, before the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth, when there were no fountains or springs of water, before the mountains were settled into place, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet the earth and fields were not made, nor the first clods of the world. When the Lord established the heavens, I was there. When he marked out the vault over the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above. When he fixed fast the foundations of the earth. When he set for the sea its limit, so that the waters should not transgress his command. Then I was beside him as his craftsman, and I was his delight day by day playing before him all the while, playing on the surface of his earth, and I found delight in the human race. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me, because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Good afternoon. And this is we commemorate Holy Trinity. I want to give you all a heads up. Um, we have an obligation, what they call Easter, Easter duty, Easter obligation. All Catholics are supposed to receive confession and communion between the first Lent, first Sunday of Lent, and Holy Trinity. So we're supposed to have done that in the last few weeks. So if you haven't done it, we still got time. We have one more day. Get all the priests after Mass. Do your confession. Confession is good for the soul. As a matter of fact, that's quite a, not much to ask for. One, one confession, one communion, Lent, the Holy Trinity, where our Lord deserves so much more. So it's not much to ask for. Confession is good for the soul. It is. It's not only good for forgiveness of sins, but it could also be used as spiritual guidance. If you have a dilemma that you're dealing with or something that is bothering you, confession is a great place to seek guidance. And confession being a sacrament, you receive graces. So going to confession once a month, you receive those good graces. So that being said, there's a story about St. Augustine, St. Augustine. He was walking on the edge of the beach, and he's pondering the Holy Trinity, trying to explain it to himself, trying to capture it. And he's going crazy trying to understand how can we have two persons in one God? And the more he thought about it, the more it bothered him because he couldn't understand it. So he saw this little boy on the edge, not far away. And the little boy was running to the water. <coughs> collecting a cup of water, running back and pouring into a hole he had done in the sand. He was working perfectly the last four messes that I've done. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with that. If it keeps on, I'll just go to the end and finish. But anyway, St. Augustine saw this little boy going went back and forth, back and forth, getting the water pouring into the hole, getting the water pouring into the hole. He, he's wondering, what is this young man doing? So he stops by the young man and he says, what are you doing? And the little boy says, I'm going to take the ocean and I'm going to fill the hole up. I'm going to empty out the ocean. I'm going to pour it in this hole. So the custom told him, little boy, that, that's impossible. You cannot take the vastness of the ocean and fill it in that hole. The little boy told him, and neither can you contemplate the vastness of the Holy Spirit, of the Trinity, into your mind. And the little boy was supposed to happen, Jesus. It's a story. But to, to, to give you an idea, it's impossible to understand the Blessed Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's just that you, can, you can't, you just cannot explain it. When we get to heaven, we'll be able to, to understand it. But right now we can. It's one of the mysteries of the church. And we as Catholics are asked to believe mysteries. You have to have a strong faith to be Catholic. The Blessed Sacrament, wine and bread, turn into body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have to believe that. If you don't believe that, the very center of our faith, then we're in the wrong place. That is the body and blood of Christ. But the Holy Spirit, along with the Father and the Son, they are pure love. And they ask things of us 
overseeing the Holy Spirit as being like what animates everything, what makes, gets everything going. What the Father and the Son desire of us, the Holy Spirit is what moves us, what pushes us into action, if we are open to it. Because we can always say no, and people say no to God every single day, unfortunately. But I truly believe that we all have a job to do, that when we were born, we, we were each assigned something to do, something specific, at a certain time, in a certain way, and that task was assigned to us and us alone. Now, we don't know what that's gonna be, but we have to be ready. Have you all seen that commercial where somebody holds the door open for somebody that's struggling with a bunch of packages, and somebody sees that person do that, and that person goes, they, they do a good deed for somebody, and somebody sees them doing a good deed, they do a good deed for somebody? That's the way we work in this world. We keep on passing on things that, that need to be done. Like I said, once again, how do we know when that time is for us? How do we know when the Lord wants to step in and say something or do something to a certain person so that we can complete our task? We don't know. The only way we can do it is to live a Christian life, to be in the Lord, to be where He wants us to be and do the things He wants us to do. And how do we do that? We have scripture. Reading the Bible is quite, you'd be surprised. Because we read certain passages, but in between those passages every Sunday, there's more readings, there's more things to learn. We have the blood of the Mass, Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. How about once in a while we get up on Saturday morning and go to church on Sunday and Saturday morning, put an extra Mass in our pocket. How about confession once a month? So we see special graces. <coughs> The Lord gives us so many opportunities to learn, to grow. Doctors, lawyers, all these professional people, even carpenters, there's always new things coming up. We will never know everything about God, but there's always something to learn about Him. And when we're learning about God, we're staying close to God. And when we stay close to God, we will be ready when our task comes along to do what the Lord has put in position for us to do and us alone. And we dare not fail. I read a story about this black woman down in the south in the 60s. Her car broke down in a pouring rain. And there she is on the side of the road, pouring rain at night, trying to flag somebody down. She had to get someplace in a hurry. And this young white man stopped and picked her up. Unheard of in the south back in the 60s. And he got her to a taxi, and the woman got to where she needed to be. The woman was Natalie Cole, Natalie Cole's mother. Nat King Cole's wife. He was dying in the hospital. And if you don't know Nat King Cole, if you ever heard of Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire, that Christmas song, Nat King Cole sings that song. He sang many beautiful songs. But she made it to the hospital at the time because that young man did something that was out of character. He stopped on a pouring rain night to pick up a black woman in the deep south back in the early 60s. I'll bet you anything that man was a Christian man. I'll bet you anything that man was living his faith and doing what he thought, what he knew he should do. An act of kindness. Because we don't know, but it might be a big act, it might be a gigantic thing we have to do, it might be a little minuscule thing. Something as simple as talking to somebody that's very depressed. And you might actually talk to that person without even knowing it from committing suicide. And then that person goes out and do something great. We're all pieces of a puzzle. And the Lord places us where we need to be. But we have to be open to the Lord. And how do we do that? Like I said, once again, scripture, holy sacrifice of the mass, confession, the sacraments. We need to be open. We need to start giving God his time. He deserves time. Not just Saturday, not just Sunday for one hour and one hour only because once we pass it out, I gotta go. There's a sale at Walmart and there's a beach and there's this and there's that. Lord, one hour and that's it. We need to push ourselves away from the computer, from television. I'm not saying these things are bad, but we can't let them dominate our time. We can't. God deserves his time. All these things steal us. They, they rob time away from us. It's 
instead of spending, you know, there's things on the, yes, the computer's a great thing. Facebook, I don't have it, but it's communication, good. Twitter, blogging, okay, good. But how much time are we dedicating to that as opposed to the time we're dedicating to prayer time for the Lord? Because we have to hear Him. In order to hear Him, we have to turn the music down, turn the noise down, <laughs> make room to listen. And He will talk to you, you'll hear Him. But you have to be open to Him. Like I said, dude, all these inventions, all these things are great, and they serve a great purpose. But we can't let it steal our time. We have to be open to the Lord. We have to be open to that moment where the Holy Spirit is going to come in, give you a nudge. And if you've ever been in a very windy day, where you feel the, the wind pushing you and you're kind of walking like this, you could hang on to something and not go, or you could let that wind push you. Let the Holy Spirit move you right to where you need to be. All we need to do is be open to the Holy Spirit, to God the Father, and God the Son. So let's be ready. Let's prepare ourselves. As the old saying goes, Jesus is coming. Act busy. Amen. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Amen. Amen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten of me, unsubstantial with the Father, to him all things for me, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was the Son of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake it was crucified with the Most Society, he suffered death and was buried, and for the sin on the third day, in the kingdom of the scriptures, he is ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to us, leaving in the dead, in the seat of the night of the land. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of the Lamb, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the God and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of the with the spoken of the cross, I have to be one holy Catholic and I'm a the church. I confess that my life is not forgiveness of sins, and I have to look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has revealed his innermost secret. He is an eternal exchange of love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It has destined us to share in that exchange. Filled with joy, we now pray. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop John, and all the bishops, that they may continue to lead us in worship of the true God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For nations divided by hatred and fear, that the Spirit of truth may lead them to harmony and concord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For people living with disabilities, that they may find patience, perseverance, and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For ourselves in this community of believers, that we may live in the unity and love of the Trinity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For the men and women who are defending us in our country, that they may be kept safe from harm and return home safely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For the increase of worthy vocations to the sacred priesthood, the consecrated life, and the permanent diaconate. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the end to the abortion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died recently, that they may have eternal rest and eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for Rafael Rivera, for whom this mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. In silence, we pray for our own personal intentions. <laughs> Loving Father, let us remain completely vigilant in our faith and wholly given over to your creative action. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The first for this Mass are Gary and Virginia Leon. The second collection this weekend is for the Oklahoma tornado victims. So please place the capital main examples in the first collection basket.
our offertory hymn is number 243, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, number 243. Majesty. 
For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim.
and all my divine teaching be there to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I give you my peace, I give you. <laughs> Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of the Lord's peace.
may receiving the sacrament, O Lord, our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. Are the voices of angels? <laughs> those I see here some young boys and girls if you're interested to join our children's choir please don't hesitate to talk to our music director uh, Mr. Jonathan right after mass today so that you can sign up and also you can uh, inquire about the practices that they have so please don't hesitate to do that we have some wonderful news that we have uh, in our parish today uh, we have some new faces. We have Father Mariano Katura, who just celebrated last night. He is from the Philippines, and um, he is four years junior than I am. We went to the same seminary. He is on his vacation, a uh, five-month uh, vacation here in the States with us. So he will be staying with us for the next five months. So welcome. face in our community today. We just hired a new youth uh, ministry coordinator, Miss Dolly Brophy. And uh, she, she, uh, she's from New York and uh, hey. is with us. And, uh, <laughs> a lot of New Yorkers who are here. So. Yay! <laughs> so, uh, for, for those youth who would like to sign up for our youth meetings, please see Dolly after Mass today. Uh, she will be starting work on um, uh, June the 3rd. But she has been active already, volunteering her services to us in these past few months already. So welcome Dolly, welcome to Our Lady of the Lakes. We have other announcements that we have for our ministers of Holy Communion and readers. You may want to visit our ministry room to check your schedule. Or, uh, we have a new schedule available for you. We would like also to welcome you all to join us for our Corpus Christi procession next weekend. It's the celebrity of the body of Christ. We have an annual uh, procession around the church with all the different altars uh, to be set up there with our Blessed Sacrament being processed. So if you are available, please don't miss this wonderful opportunity to join the processions. Most importantly, too, we would like to invite our first communicants, those who had their first confession this year. Um, you are most invited to come over and participate in the procession. We have also a fundraising that we support uh, by, it is a fundraising headed by Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Dominic and Audrey Delio, our parishioner. Uh, supporting with the CCW and the rest of the parishioners. They have this wonderful program that they do every year. It's to help the underprivileged youth of our city. Not only of our parish, but our city of Deltona. And they have this camp challenge that they, they do every year. If you would like to know more about it, please talk to them after Mass. They are at the foyer. If you would like to support them, please do so. You're most encouraged to do it. And you can talk to them after mass. What else do we have here? There's no office. Uh, office will be closed on Monday. Uh, and also there will be no adoration on Monday. Coffee and sweet treats are uh, hosted by the members of the Filipino community. And they have, uh, I think they already, they'll be serving brunch already at this time. So uh, please don't forget to visit them at the social hall. Um, in a last couple of months, a couple of months ago, I mentioned to you all about uh, Catholic Appeal. And Catholic Appeal is, is uh, coming together of all the parishes in the Diocese of Orlando supporting the initiatives and the programs of the Diocese of Orlando. It's like we're one big family coming together. But all these programs can happen without our financial support. So each parish is given uh, an allocation assessment 
of how much we can contribute based on our offertory collection. We have 114,000 support and the diocese needed it in order that we can help them with their programs. So far, uh, we are still short of 28,000. And there's, and I would like to really thank those who have supported this raising of the funds for this. We have 430 families from Our Lady of the Lakes who have pitched in so that we can come up with the numbers assigned to us. We still need it more. And if you have friends, family members, or if you haven't yourself uh, made a commitment yet, you may want to ask one of our ushers to give you the envelope for that. We needed your support. And as I mentioned to you all, a load that is heavy, if it's divided among many, it becomes a lighter load. So let's come together as a family and, and support this program of the diocese so we can show how much we participate and love our diocese of Orlando. So please uh, consider that. This weekend is a beautiful weekend since it is a memorial weekend. And our what we are enjoying now, the freedom that we have, uh, will not be possible without the men and women who have offered their lives and their time for us, the members of the armed forces. If you are here present, please stand so that we can give you a recognition. And give you If you could remain standing, and we would like to play a music for you to give tribute to the services that you have offered for us. Thank you.
I hope we didn't miss any of the hymns. Thank you very much. Let us all stand. Alright, the final blessing, I would like to personally thank Father Kenny for the warm welcome and thank you for allowing me to journey in your faith as a parish. But then to pray for one another. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace and love, glorifying the Lord with our lives. Thank you. Our closing hymn is number 902, America the Beautiful, number 902.